Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this video. So I hope that you are all doing really great today. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about that trough located in the vicinity of the Bahamas. Uh, we are going to talk about whether it has the potential to still become our first tropical cyclone, Alex. And not merely that, but it has been affecting those areas with a lot of rainfall. So we're going to talk about what to expect uh, in terms of that as we progress into this week and then we're going to be taking a general look at conditions that are out there and another prediction is also out for the hurricane season so we're going to take a look at that as well and so before I go into details Okay, so here we are taking a general look at the Atlantic right now. So we do have that frontal system that is offshore of the U.S. And then in the vicinity of the Bahamas, we have all of that convection associated with that trough. And that has really been affecting uh, areas within the vicinity of it. So I'm talking about the Bahamas, Cuba, uh, possibly Hispaniola as well, and Jamaica. So yes, here in Jamaica, yesterday was crazy in some areas. There was actually some flooding, so I'm going to put that video on screen now. So yes, there was flooding in some areas in St. James, and things were just pretty crazy and a little unprecedented here. But yes, I hope that things are fine in those other countries that are being impacted by this, but it is still going to be lingering around, and this is not the end of it. So we can expect to see more from this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is expected. So we're taking a look at the GFS model right here and so we have a lot going on but we are focusing on those black lines we're seeing which are called isobars and they are lines of equal pressure and the different colors. The colors they indicate the precipitation rate in millimeters per hour and so that's really what we're going to be focusing on and so by Tuesday on the 19th of the month we see where we somewhat have uh, that system they are trying to develop. So obviously to get a little bit stronger because when you see the yellows and the reds within that green shade it indicates that we have more going on with the system so a little bit of intensification with it and we see that precipitation still present for most of the greater Antilles and the Bahamas however as we head to Wednesday on the 20th of April GFS is showing that this thing here is going to be attached to a frontal system that's going to be making its way out of the US so that is what the GFS is showing for this thing here. It's not expecting it to really uh, be defined in terms of circulation. We don't see any closed isobars being there again. I believe last week it was showing that we would have maybe a very weak tropical cyclone. But now GFS is someone starting to doubt that happening based on what we're seeing here. And so now let's go on to Euro and see what they are expecting. And we're seeing here that Euro is showing something a little bit similar to what the GFS is expecting so uh, not expecting anything major coming out of that trough but again that doesn't really matter right now because areas within the greater Antilles and Bahamas as I said earlier are going to be impacted by this regardless of what status it is going to be as we head to the midweek so I would say there's still a chance that we could have Alex but that chance is dissipating but next let's go ahead and see how favorable things are so first up we are taking a look at sea surface temperatures and we're seeing here that things are not the warmest right now in most of the atlantic basin and the main development region but for the bahamas area right there we do have some warm enough sea surface temperatures to help to support some intensification of this thing here we're talking about maybe 26 degrees and that's usually quite fine for our tropical systems but we can see that the warmest section in the Atlantic Basin right now is just off the coast of Africa, uh, way over to the right side of your screen, and in the Caribbean as well. So things are always pretty warm in the Caribbean because that's the tropical region where we generally have warm conditions all year round and so next let's go ahead and take a look at that wind shear. So wind shear is a very very 
a significant factor when it comes on to these tropical systems trying to develop because whenever we have strong upper level winds it usually prevents them from intensifying and it just rips them up so uh the reds and the oranges they indicate that there is a very strong wind shear which makes things pretty unfavorable for us to see development so this map here is for today sunday the 17th of the month and so we're seeing that in the vicinity of the bahamas we do have some somewhat of a break in that strong shear but it's not a whole lot but as we head to monday we see a little bit more of somewhat favorable conditions for this to potentially get a little bit more in shape but as we head towards tuesday on the 19th we're seeing that that unfavorable shear is starting to set in and that is going to be kicked up by that cold front we're seeing somewhat of this linear shape right there so yes it's going to be because of that front that is expected to make its way out of the u.s and so as i said earlier things are not looking the very best right now for us to have alex but what you're seeing right now isn't even guaranteed these are all predictions and so we just have to wait and see what the eventuality is going to be but in terms of that possibility i would say there is still somewhat of a chance just not a great chance for us to see a tropical or subtropical cyclone development i would say a low chance for that happening and next in terms of our newest predictions that are out for this hurricane season and so we have two new predictions they are from the weather channel and the university of arizona so the weather channel is expecting that we could have 20 named storms of which eight could become hurricanes and four major hurricanes so these are definitely some pretty significant numbers right now this is definitely Definitely an above average hurricane season not a whole lot in terms of the amount of hurricanes and major hurricanes but a lot more than normal named storms and so the university of arizona is literally expecting an average season so they are forecasting 14 named storms of which seven could become hurricanes and three major hurricanes so it can be concluded that the university of arizona is probably expecting more of a neutral and so pattern that's going to be present with which would be the reason they're expecting that there would be an average number of uh, named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes that would develop during the season. Whereas for the Weather Channel, it's likely that they are expecting somewhat of a weak La Nina that will be present, hence the above average activity that they are anticipating. And so guys, that is really it for this update video. So again, there is still the chance that we could have Alex, but regardless of what it'll be, uh, the Greater Antilles and portions of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands will feel impacts from this throughout this week in terms of that heavy rainfall. And so uh, we have those two new predictions. Aside from that, nothing more is really there in the tropics in terms of significance. And so if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. And you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And just remember to always be weather wise.